All right, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the vlog. Today's vlog is going to be about the bike. Real quick on the Miata, if you guys saw the last vlog with the Olins and the new tires, it's pretty much dialed in and the only thing needs to be done is just brakes and the car is done. So enough about that Miata though. Today's vlog is going to be all about the bike and what's been done to it. And it's crazy to see where the bike is at right now. You know, I did so much to this bike and it's insane to see like how much has been changed ever since I owned it. And I've owned it really ever since December, January. But yeah, there's so much I wanna to talk to you guys about that's been done to the bike, but let's go ahead and start from the front of the bike. So as you can see, I got brand new wheels, freshly powder coated to magnesium blue. This is from a 2018 to 2019, like that gen of the Sportster. They call it Mag Wheels, uh, both front and rear. So I got the 19 inch in the front and the 16 inch in the rear. Originally, it was the matte black uh, color that usually comes from Harley, but I went ahead and powder coated Mag Blue just because if you guys seen my cars, they always run either Mag Blue or some sort of dark color but I figured it would look really good with the black theme going on and it just looks, it just pops out really well with the bike. Next thing is I actually had to fix part of the Springer front end. Um, a local shop called Slapsides in Campbell. They were like, you're missing a piece here. We recommend putting this on. So when I was getting the tires installed, I actually had uh, brought this to the shop and they're like, you definitely needed this otherwise a lot of bad things could have happened so glad uh, they caught that and I brought it to their attention. The next thing is I finally was able to black out my rocker boxes uh, both front and rear obviously. The uh, cam covers all along this side and the, it was actually already wrinkled black on the other side but that was because I actually was forced to due to a bolt stripping out or whatever so finally not just this side but this side and the right side of the bike is now wrinkled black when it comes to covers and obviously you already see the Kuzeri uh, the cover for the the cam cover side I have it actually laser etched so it's all smooth and actually came out really good so it's not too pixelated at all um, it is it's actually weird on the camera it looks slightly purple like a purple black but like in real life I promise it's actually darker than what it looks right now. You guys saw it already on this side, but this is for the primary cover side. Looks really good. I'm really happy with how it came out. Honestly, customderbycover.com, it was all for like $200. So it couldn't really go wrong with that. I'm just glad it came out really well. I went ahead and also actually wire tucked all of this before. So if you guys remember, I had a lot of like loose wire just hanging like underneath the tank and it was actually worse because the tank was higher and I actually had to cut the bracket to make it lower again to hide some of the wires but I figured you know what I'll just go on Amazon I'll buy these high temp uh, wire looms because obviously it gets really hot on top of the motor so and it matches with the OEM uh, wrap so it just it just looks more fresh because it's brand new but it's pretty much almost the same material. So I'm glad I made that nice and tucked and neat looking. The next thing is also wrinkle black uh, exhaust shield. And this is actually from a different company. So that's why the wrinkle black on this and the wrinkle black on this looks a little bit different. So this is from a shop uh, local to us. I'm actually in front of my work right now, Sake Bomb. So uh, we have a local powder coater here and he was able to do the exhaust shield and the kickstand. So that's a wrinkle black as well. Yeah, so it might be just different material that they use, but that's kind of why it's a little bit different. Also because this is an exhaust shield, so it does get hot. So my guess is with heats and temperature, it will probably fade the color a little bit. But otherwise, I mean, I'm pretty happy with how this came out. It looks really good. 
you can still see the Vans and Heinz logo even though that's also been powder coated. I also got a brand new seat. So this is a Drag Specialties solo uh, seat. And the one I had before was actually really good. It was a La Para. But the only thing with that one was it actually stuck out a little bit more. So I had to uh, cut, like if I were to run that, I would have to drill a new hole that goes like further out here. And I didn't really want to do that because I still wanted some fender exposed. And so I figured, you know what, I'll just uh, get another one. And this worked out perfectly well. It was actually lighter too. And uh, yeah, and I had to actually drill a new hole for this one. And which leads to the next thing I've done is a new fender. So this is from Sportster Garage in Germany. Uh, I actually sold my old one, which was already bobbered out, but I sold that one. I got this one. I got a new fender strut cover. So what I had to do actually was my old one came out to here for my fender struts and I actually had to use a cutoff wheel to go like pretty much cut it off right there use a flappy disc to kind of curve it out to make it smooth and then slap this cover on. So that's why this is this looks shorter than like an OEM Sportster. So just looking just going for that bobber look in the rear honestly. Um, it looks really good in my opinion. I, th I feel like it came out really well. And of course, you guys could tell already, but I hardtail converted this, so there's no more progressive springs. Uh, I People think I might be crazy for doing that, but actually I compensated by tire pressure. So I was a 28 to 32, but now I am a 12. And because of that, I'm able to actually have somewhat of a decent suspension in the rear or suspension, quote unquote. So. I'm okay with that. I honestly, it just looks really good. And as you could see, the marks here were from me running the progressive sh uh, shocks and being like kind of low. So that's why I had to switch to the hardtail as well, just because of this and also it looks better. I also got brand new lights. Again, from Sportster Garage. Uh, this is a both signal and LED. So I'll turn it on for you guys right now. But you guys could see that is the LEDs for, and that's just a normal tail light. So if I go ahead and brake, so you guys can see that both the yellow and the red turn on. But if I signal, then both the red and the amber turn on, but it hyper flashes. So reason being is because I don't have a res resistor in there to trick that it's low voltage so I don't mind because this actually brings more attention to people out there so just looks good in my opinion just a cleaner look sleek look instead of like the OEM circle headlights that I used to have here before so a couple last things I need to do to this bike honestly is I just need to pick out a couple of the covers out so the oil the oil pan cover uh, the strut cover and the tank as well. Um, I pretty much just need to take it out so I can have a paint match to be uh, like a matte black pretty much to match the rear fender and then you know my front end to be uh, to match my front end as well since it's matte black but honestly those are all the small details it's really not much to it otherwise this bike is pretty much good to go it's set is exactly how I imagined it would be front chopper style six inch over forks with the bobber style rear end so the only major thing is that it still rides a little bit choppy so my fix for this is actually talk to a tuner that we are neighboring with and he tunes harleys for a living and he went ahead and told me to swap out the in intake for pretty much more surface area of the filter it just is better for the overall flow and he told me to also change from sevens to eights on the iridium spark plug. I'm running seven right now in GKs and he said because of how hot Harleys get that it's better to run eights and it just keeps overall it keeps it cooler so that's all I need to change on the bike and then this thing will be ready for a dyno. So that's pretty much it guys because for the dyno tune I really am not trying to go for any like horsepower gains at all. I just want it to be smooth so it doesn't cut out when I'm riding because it tends to do that every now and then and it makes sense because I have an aftermarket intake and exhaust so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just you know 
tune it for just reliability and have it smooth and then after that she is smooth sailing otherwise guys that is pretty much it if you guys have any questions on what i did to the bike and if you guys are trying to do something similar please comment down below and i will try my best to answer your guys's questions otherwise guys that's pretty much it i will catch you guys later and i will keep you guys up as always see ya